give the Lord a hand. Come on, people. Let us give the Lord a mighty shout of glory. Lord, we are so grateful that we can stand here and celebrate life because in the calendar in the commemorations of the days of the calendar there are those landmarks that speak to us very clearly about your goodness this day is one of them because it speaks of an end of the year and prepares us to usher in a beginning of another year we thank you that we saw last Christmas and we are able to see another one yet an addition to the days that you've given us we don't take them for granted you've just been good to us and we give you praise and we thank you so receive all the glory receive all the honor and all the praise in Jesus name and everyone said Amen. let's give the Lord a hand come on here people mm. sit down good morning and Merry Christmas oh my god my god I said good morning and Merry Christmas yeah some people think Mary Christmas the word Mary in Christmas is also spelled as Mary the girl no the two different words one is Mary the other one is Mary so you got to be careful what you say but it's good to see you all of you and to thank you for holding on to life thank God for you because you're here we thank God for everything is done and is about to do even more as we go along. I'm going to be very brief today. All right, all right, go ahead, go ahead and give the Lord a hand. We're going to be very brief today, but we have some good news for you. Um, if you look from here where I'm standing, you'll be able to look all the way and see the Rubiri. That is your property now. We will start talking in a few days about how we got there and what the challenges are. Most of them financial challenges, basically. The rest is nothing. The rest is what happens. We, we've always known that, that these things happen like that. On that plot, on this one, and all the others, there has been, there have always been some some kind of uh, uh, do, but we are away. The book of Luke, chapter two. I don't know whether there are any news people here yet. Any newsmen yet? Okay. Then I need to make a statement. Yeah. Who do you work for? Who? UBC. Okay. Well, I want then I want you to hear me out very clearly. Let me start with a personal message to the nation, to the people of Uganda, um, the leaders of this nation in every sphere. I'd like to convey my sincere congratulations for all of you for having reached this great day in the calendar of Christendom, Christmas. We thank God for your lives and for everyone. I'd like to outline one or two issues that I want us to know. I was very gratified when the president 
appointed someone in his own office to combat corruption. And I'd like to give a few ideas in that area, if they're usable. One, I believe there is need to raise and increase salaries for civil servants. They continue to work under very uh, hard circumstances and therefore there is need to consider them for an uplift, an increase of salaries for them. There is also need to put incorruptible officers in our top government offices. The corruption that is being talked about is not majorly with the common people. It is with the people that have power and are abusing that power. I'm also advocating for the punishment of corrupt officials because unless the people see gestures of goodwill from government, they will not think that the exercise is serious. And it is impossible to fight corruption if you're using corrupt officials. So I am advocating for an incorruptible team or system that will fight the other corrupt people. And it's very clear from scripture that darkness cannot chase darkness. It is only light that um, does so. I believe that there is need now to reshuffle the cabinet and the new leadership come into force. Newer, fresher, younger leadership that will help start afresh and kickstart this system and bring out the desires of government for the next couple of years. And I think there's also need to consider putting more finances in at least four or five government departments that need them, need the finances more. Agriculture, tourism, ICT, and uh, science and technology, those ones. And possibly also the health sector, make them better so that the people can feel that there is something coming back to them. Other than that, I wish each one a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2019, and I invite you all to the Passover festival at Namboli. <clears throat> now go ahead and give the Lord a hand, thank you. Open with me the book of Luke. Chapter 2, and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing, his, uh, governing Syria. So, all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David. To be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn, her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. I want to use for a subject, what Christmas brought to Bethlehem. 
what Christmas brought to Bethlehem. Bethlehem was a very small city, a very small town, if you want. But use, let's use the word city. Very, very simple town. Common, regular people in the city. Who cares? Nothing was happening there. Nothing serious. Until certain things happened. And these are the things I want to bring to your attention today very briefly because I know you understand these things and you don't need much to shout about. But first of all, the Bible says, a decree went out to Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. In the last couple of, of, of days, you've heard so much talk about registration of churches. Registration is simply a common regular order for people who want to be recognized for whatever they do. Everything is registered. Every one of you who has got a telephone set has a SIM card in there. That SIM card, however cheap, 1,000 shillings, 2,000 shillings at most, was registered. How many of you took your phones for registration? There you go. If you are a citizen of this country, there was a time when you sat before a camera, a photo was taken, fingerprints were taken, and you got registered. And you have what they call now an NIN, a National Identification Number. It comes on your card, your ID, your national ID. That is registration. If you own a car, you need registration for that car to be on the road. If you're involved in the production of wine or uh, any liquor, then you have to apply for a license to, to produce that wine or that drink, and you need to do that. Even if you're producing something that is almost similar to that, you have to be registered under the Nguri Act. Did you realize that? If you produce mango juice, or orange juice or apple juice, you still register under the Nguri Act. The Act, which was presented here in 1950 some, is what still controls every juice that you produce in this country. Nobody has ever bothered to say, hey, I'm not producing Nguri. I'm producing apple juice, I'm producing mango juice, but you have to register under that law because it is the standard law and it is the law that is currently in, in operation. If you carry a firearm, and for you, all of you who are soldiers or who are in the, in the forces, or if you're private and you have, you, 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 you have a private firearm, a gun, a pistol, you have to have it registered. It is the requirement of the law. Registration happens everywhere and every day. It is a requirement of the banks that if you go there and you are a church or an organization, that for you to acquire a bank, a, a, a bank account, you need some form of registration. It is inevitable. So the church should not fight registration, but the church should ask for correct registration. The correct one. I don't want to be um, uh, 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 producing something and be registered under a stupid law. I don't want to be um, doing some work and be registered under a different law. I want to be registered correctly for what I am and for what I do. This was census. They called it registration, but it was actually census in the days of Augustus Caesar. It was census, but also took the form of registration. So they knew everybody. That's why Jesus was registered as son of Joseph, as son of Mary. Because everyone has to have a benefactor anyway. Even the children that are not born by some people have to have some form of benefactor, somebody that stands as a parent or a guardian or takes care. So the church should not fight registration, but should demand for the correct law.
currently we are registered under, we've been registering under three laws and government as I hear has decided to create a new platform where we register all our churches, all our, all our, all our organizations as, as, as gospel ministers. So let's wait for them to do their job. That is an appeal to the church. Can somebody say amen? amen. And when it happened, in, where we read, Jesus was not yet born. And Joseph had to go and be registered. So it happened that just before his, Joseph is registered, Mother Mary has all these birth pains and she has to go to hospital. There was no hospital. There was no place to accommodate her. There was no place for her to give her birth. And she found a place, something, anything that had a shelter. And she went there and had a baby. That's how Joseph registered Jesus as his own son. What came to Bethlehem, this small city? Number one, angels. All through the book of Matthew and Luke and John and everywhere, on the story of the birth of Christ, called the Nativity, the story of the Nativity, the story of the Nativity is a story of angelic activity. You see angels everywhere. You see angels, first of all, we see angels visiting Zechariah to announce the coming of John the Baptist. The same angels visit Elizabeth. The same angel visits Mary. The same angel visits Joseph. This, then it gets, it gets even more exciting. When Jesus is born, a whole host of angels. The Bible says the whole sky was full of angels singing this wonderful song. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to his name. And then of course angels talking to other people. We see angels talking to shepherds announcing the coming of the Messiah. We see angels talking to the Magi, the wise men from the East, directing them and guiding them. We see angels everywhere. Please allow me to announce that you've just entered, entered into a season where angelic activity is going to be rampant and you're going to get it. <laughs> angels are coming. Whenever something good is about to happen, an angel will come. Whenever God sends an angel, it will be for two reasons. One, judgment, or two, bringing a blessing. Whenever you see angelic activity, there will be judgment. And there will also be a blessing. I am on the side of the blessing. I want the side of the blessing. I want angels to come to me, not with judgment, with, but with blessing. I don't know about you people, but I tell you today in the name of Jesus, you cannot stop that activity. Why did I say that when angels come, there is, uh, there is either judgment or blessing? Because the first time you see angels in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 3. The moment Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says they were chased out of Eden and an angel with a flaming sword was put in charge of the garden. That's when you first see the angel. So it wasn't good for Adam because the first time he knows that, he's, uh, that there are angels around him, it was to say, to say to him, get out of here. Get out. And he was told to leave. But I'm telling you today, if you love Jesus, there will be no judgment executed on your life, but the angels will come to deliver good news and blessing to you. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. The next time you see angels is when Abraham, no, not Abraham, but Sarah. Sarah has issues with his maid, with her maid. This young girl called Hagar. That's the next time you see angels. 
and she walked away from home in chapter 16 verse 7 of Genesis Genesis 16 and verse 7 maybe we start with verse uh, oh I don't know but not to take much time verse 3 then Sarah Abraham's wife took Hagar her maid the Egyptian gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife after Abraham had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan so he went into Hagar she conceived and when she saw that she had conceived her mistress became despised in her eyes okay so now we have issues we have issues with mama and the maid all right then Sarah said to Abraham, my wrong be upon you. I gave, you. I gave my maid to you to embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between you and me. What Sarah is telling her husband is that I don't know what I did and I don't know what wrong I did. Because I gave you this girl so that you can get a baby so that you can have an heir now she's despising me i want judgment i want judgment now so abraham said indeed your maid is in your hand do to her as you please and when sarah dealt harshly with her she fled from her presence wow Mm -hmm. now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness by the spring on the way to Shur and said Hagar Sarah's maid where have you come from and where are you going she said I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai now, do you realize that the word mistress is abused nowadays? It's used rather stupidly, foolishly. It's not what is said here. Well, that I'm running from her. And the angel said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her. So, the first time Hagar is leaving home, it was on her own volition she wanted to leave because the woman of the house was mistreating her she wants to go and she starts on a journey and she's in the wilderness and she's heavily pregnant and an angel comes where are you going i am going home from where they got me i can't take this woman and the angel said you don't know what you're doing go back and submit yourself but then again at a later date she leaves the same home now with with her son in the same almost in the same spot it's only a couple of miles different the angel finds her where are you going I'm about to die and I don't care I shall go now because not only am I being chased by my mistress but i'm also being chased by my lord the father of my child i'm going away but the boy is about to die the bible says and the angel of the lord showed her some water springs of water so that she may not die the first time she asked for judgment and the judgment was go back the second time she asked for a blessing and the blessing was right there she got water I said angels are coming they were in Abraham's life we saw angels we see angels in Jacob's life in Isaac's life we see angels all through we see angels in Joseph's life we see angels in the ministry of Moses 
We see angels all through the 400 years of the Israeli stay or the Jewish stay in Egypt. We see angels everywhere. We see an angel leading the Jews out of, out of Egypt back into the promised land. God said, I'm sending my angel before you. I came here to declare to you, angels are coming. If you like it, you should clap and make sense of it. Angels are coming. Somebody say, angels are coming. We see angels in Sodom. We see angels everywhere. We see angels confronting bad people and helping good people. We see angels when Balaam wanted to curse Israel. We see angels visiting Manoah to bring about the good news of the coming of Samson. We see angels at work when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are thrown into the fiery furnace. We see angels coming when Daniel is thrown in the lion's den. We see angels when Peter is in prison. We see angels when Jesus was in Gethsemane. The Bible says angels came and encouraged him. The angels announced every good thing that was coming. Honey, we see angels when Jesus resurrected. It is the angels that said, who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? We are looking for Jesus. How? How? How dumb can you be? Why would you be looking for the living among the dead? Angels are coming. Angels are coming. I want you to make a claim on them. You now know it as a truth. This is the season of angelic activity and angels are coming your way. Maybe there are things that you need. They have to be delivered. They have to be brought. Angels have a way of disguising themselves. I repeat, angels have a way of disguising themselves. Do you remember angels that came to Abraham and told him, we have come, you know, we are going to go and see Sodom and see Gomorrah. Do you know what the Bible says? That the Lord was among them and he had two angels, one on his right and one on his left. And they were talking to Abraham, but they looked like men. It is the same scripture that Paul uses to tell us, you people do not despise or do not ever, ever stop welcoming visitors for even our forefathers Abraham himself welcomed angels without knowing people are going to come in your life they will look like human beings but there will be angels bringing stuff to you may I pray in the name of Jesus that God brings angels your way that God brings people dressed in gomeses and suits, but they are indeed angels of heaven, bringing gifts of God and bringing the blessings of God into your life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can you, can you tell your neighbor, I am expecting something drastic because angels are coming my way. That is one thing that happened to Bethlehem. Angels. Let this place become a Bethlehem so that angels can come. Every one of you should have a dozen of them. One in the front, one in the back, one on the side and one on the other side. And some others to work with you. Wherever you go, everything you do, starting now until next Christmas, you should have two angelic gods on your side as you go and as you come back. Hey, somebody shout hallelujah for me. Number two, the things that happened to Bethlehem. Number two, Bethlehem was visited by a star, a guiding star. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, and it's chapter two, and it's verse one, Matthew chapter two and verse one, now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Aha. Uh -huh. 
wise men too. We'll see them. He said, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Are you following? So, question is, how did you get here, you guys? How did you come here? Well, we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Jesus coming brought a very unique star over Bethlehem. A guiding star. God wants to guide everyone that is seeking after Christ. If you are a seeker and you are seeking for God and you are seeking for God's guidance, God will send you some form of guide. To the wise men, it was a star. Other people are guided by God's hand. Ooh, you don't know. Have you ever heard of this word called providence? Providence, have you heard of it? Things begin to line up, they take shape, then they line up and they take shape and you happen to be in the right position when you are needed. Sometimes unwittingly, you don't know. You just happen to be there when somebody needs you. I remember of a woman in the book of Second Kings who comes to the king to demand for her plots that she had lost possibly seven or more years before to a bad regime. She is coming to claim for what is hers. But in the meantime, she's on appointment. The king had asked, and this is a new one, had asked for all the works of the former prophet called Elisha. Elisha at this stage is dead. But he needed some information. And says, oh, they said, oh, there is a young chap who used to work for him. His name is Gehazi. He knows the story. And they looked around, around, and, and found Gehazi. Gehazi was not in ministry. And so the king says, are you Gehazi? Yes, sir, my lord. Okay. How did you become so popular you are here? My Lord, I worked for a man who worked for a man. Hmm? I worked for a great man who worked for a great man. What do you mean? Well, I worked for Elisha, sir. But who in turn had worked for Elijah? Ah, so you know both. Yes, sir. Can you tell me some things? Oh, where do I start? Respected people. Fire from heaven. Activities in this world. Many prophets killed. That prophet, Elijah, was amazing. But then again, his successor, my immediate boss, was even tougher. He did two times the miracles that Elijah did. What did he do? Oh, the most vivid one that I remember very well was when a woman from Shunem came to him and said, my child is... Well, she did not have babies before, but when she had a baby, the baby died. The king says, died? Yes, sir. So what happened? Well, the prophet gave me his stick. I took this stick and put it on the, the, the child. The baby did not wake up. <laughs> so you are not a prophet yourself. My Lord, I found out that I couldn't be a prophet. I just found out, and that's why I'm not. Okay? Continue story. Well, then, by the time I came back to tell him the child has not risen up, Elisha, the prophet, my boss, and this woman had arrived. So he goes in, he opens the door, and there the child was dead. And he shoved me inside the room, closed the door, and I just watched him. He went and put his body on top of the baby and prayed and prayed and he sweated he prayed after all those gymnastics 
the baby sneezed. I was there when resurrection happened. And the prophet gave this child back to her mother, to his mother, sorry. And the Bible says, just as he was telling the story, the woman walked into the palace and into the presence of the king. And Gehaz turned around to see this interruption and said, Oh, my Lord, your royal highness, that's the woman and that's the child. Providence. God guides people when they don't know into the, place, into the very blessing and presence of his power to give them the desire of, your, of their hearts. I'm talking about a guiding star. God is going to put something in your life to guide you. God will show you how to do work better than everybody. God will give you a notch above other people so that your bosses look around and say, he can go, he can go, he can go, she can go, she can go. But this one cannot go. This one should stay. Why? Well, look. Look at what he has done. All these others are non-achievers. This one is an achiever. And God will have given you that wisdom. It's coming this season. God guides with his hand. God guides with his word. God guides with his spirit. God guides people according to the very things that they know better. The people in the East are very much into astrology and astronomy. And of course, these are two different things. But they are into star study. They are into um, cosmic study. They study the, uh, the universe and how all these things have happened. And for them, the fascination is with the stars and the sky. Those that don't understand them, worship them. But those that know them, they know that when you see this star, that's what it means. Jesus has a star. Jesus has a means of showing you where you need to be and what you need to do. Can somebody say amen? amen. I'm telling you, you're going to see some activity from the skies. Now, now. If you don't believe angels, at least believe stars. And some of you are saying, can an angel come to my small home in Katwe? Yes. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, yes. yes. Oh, come on, speak like a Christmas lady. Yes. yes. Be soft and nice and uh, tell them. Uh, be be um, like a man, a, a Christmas man. Say, yes. yes. Okay. Tell your neighbor, if God does not send an angel to you, he will send a star. Okay. The mixture is no good. Only women say, if God does not send an angel, he will send a star. Only men, let me hear who is stronger. Men, if God... Uh-huh. Yeah. So why didn't you speak before? Let's all speak in unison now. Let's go. Come on. Which one do you want better? Which one do you want better? Do you want the angel or the star? Hey, listen to me, people. Every which way you get it, every which you get, you will get there. If it is the angel, he will guide you in the right place. If it is the star, he will take you the right place. Somebody shout hallelujah. An angel happened in Bethlehem. A star happened in Bethlehem. But not only those two, but there is a third one. A baby happened in Bethlehem. Not some lousy, lousy baby like we all get. This is some form of baby, honey. One baby that attracts the entire heaven. You, you, did you hear our choir sing? I even got text messages I was coming on the way. Are you in church yet? I said, why? I sent somebody, somebody sent me a, 
uh, uh, what's up? Are you in church? Yes, I said, yes, I'm going to preach. He says, so you are there? I said, what do you mean? He says, I've never seen and known the choir to be that good. Can you, can you imagine people praising this choir here? What about the angelic choir that was in the, in the air? Oh, people. <laughs> there was an amazing baby born in Bethlehem. And I believe on that day, there, were, there are so many people that were born. So many babies were born on the same day. Jesus is not the only baby born on Christmas Day. There were other babies, but this one outwitted all of them and cancelled them all. By the way, I, never, I, I did not remember to tell you that my dad today is 91. You have to sing to him after the service. To him. But do you know people? A baby happened in Bethlehem. And maybe you don't understand what it means to be famous as a baby. You, you don't know what it means to be famous. This is a very famous baby in a very small town. There are babies that are born in a town and the environment and the outlook of that city or town changes because of them. You don't catch it. How many of you know a town called Akokoro? Let me see. One, two. You don't know it, do you? Oh, when I was growing up, Akokoro was very popular. It is the birth town of Dr. Milton Obote. Ah. Oh, Akokoro is the first town in the remote to get a tarmac road from the main road. And people said, how can you put a road to go to a kokoro? What is there? There's no commercial thing. There, there's no, it's not any kind of, You're talking what you don't know. A kokoro is the birth town of your president. They had to have a tarmac road. And by good luck, I have ever driven on the same road. It is still one of the best roads in this country. And it was made in the 60s. Today, it is the only road that has street lights that are working from main road all the way to Akokoro village. E <laughs> <laughs> How many of you don't know Rakitura? Aha! Who knew Raktura before 1986? You did not even know there was anything called Raktura. No, you did not. None of you knew there was a, a place called Kisozi. You tell me you don't know about Raktura, I think you come from another planet. Why? Somebody was born in that little town. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Are you going to say amen? How many of you have never heard of the word Koboko? You've never heard of Koboko? How many of you have heard of Koboko? How did you get to know it? Amin was born in Koboko. And some people are saying, really? Yeah. Well, you're only too young. But Koboko was popular. And I think still is. How many of you have heard of the word Kogelo? Never heard. Never heard. Never heard of Kogelo. How many of you know Kogelo? You should know. You should know. I don't doubt you. You, I have doubts. <laughs> Who can tell me about Kogelo? Tell me about Kogelo. Indeed, Kogelo is in South Nyanza, 
near Kisumu in Kenya. It is the birthplace of Barack Obama's daddy. If you don't know Kogelo, it's because you are not a Kenyan and you don't follow American politics. Kogelo became very popular because of Barack Obama. He visited Kenya and said, I need to go to Kogelo. They said, no, it's not Kogelo, it's Kogelo. Oh, you don't know what it is to an American try and tell him, said, what the, you, you tell an American, you will speak a hundred times and say, please, 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 listen, God, say, say what the, say what the, say what the, say what the, no, 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 they don't know nothing. And if your name is longer than mine, something like Nakaima or Nabankema, you imagine how many of you God is bringing something to your town mm -hmm. and do you know the reason for the town it's you I came here to pray that God will make your village popular somebody said because of me hey, come on say it with say it with vigor I said, I'm praying to God that your town will become popular. Shout. Yeah. We should know about you. We don't want to know about you when you're dead. But Nafi, where are we going? How do you get there? No. We should know now how to get there when you are still alive. We want all the angels to bring us to there when you are still here. Oh, people, say, I want all the people to come there when we are still here. Come, say it. <laughs> Bethlehem had a child. Jesus is just too amazing. Too amazing. Everybody shout, too amazing. He is glorious. No one measures with him. He has no equal. He's not like any children. No armies combined together have the power and the strength or might that he has. Somebody shout, Jesus is special. Jesus, Jesus rules all the earth and all the heavens. Satan and all the demons put together bow to Jesus. Oh, people, please, please. His story, his story cannot be turned into a novel. No. His story is scripture. His story is God's word. The story of Jesus is the story of God's word. Can you imagine that somebody's life story is a life-giving stream to people? Somebody's life story is life-giving stream to other people. You think about it. Jesus does not bless. He's a blessing. Oh my God, they don't hear me. He does not give light. He's light. Jesus does not resurrect people. His resurrection itself. No, Jesus does not show the way. He is the way. Jesus does not teach the truth. He himself is the truth. He does not give life. He himself is life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can you imagine that happening in your village? That the life giver, resurrection itself, life itself, the way itself is in your neighborhood. Even
even if I was a neighbor to that town, I would migrate and go to that little town and stay. Oh, I wish I was a neighbor. My wishes were destroyed 1975, Christmas Eve, like yesterday. By the way, yesterday is when I clocked 43 years saved. Yesterday. Mugenda kunja galaru ampaka. Every song, every song today and in this season has been about one little village, Bethlehem, and the little boy, the little child that was born there. Bethlehem was visited by an amazing baby. I'm going to ask the choir to get ready, not now, but in about two minutes, to come and sing with, with me. Or hail the power of Jesus' name. Get ready. If you can't, we'll sing it anyway. Finally, the fourth thing that happens to Bethlehem, gifts. Gifts. When the Magi, M-A-G-I, the wise men of the East came, the Bible says they brought three gifts, very important gifts. One, they brought gold. How many of you have received a card from somebody today? You got a card somehow, somebody blessed you with a card. Well, I got some, but how many of you got a Christmas card? And it had flashy, flashy colors. It wasn't gold. It was just gold color. We don't even have them here. Thank God. How many of you have received cards on your phones? Oh. Bling, 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 bling. Look at that. Look at, ay, 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 ay. Look at Murunji's. Look at that. Look at, can you see that? Ha, ha. This is now a card from his daughter. Daddy, I've sent you a Christmas card. But it's just flash, honey. It's just flashes. That's a Christmas SMS. It's not a card. But you got flashy cards, you know, it's just paper coated with some kind of flashy color. Jesus did not get flashy colors. He was given real gold. He was also given by another one, another group of people, what they call frankincense. Frankincense, uh, I'll, I'll explain it in a minute. And then he was also given what they call Myra. Myra. Now, gold. The people who brought gold to him said, to him, with what they said is, we come to you. You look like a baby today. But you are the king. Because gold is the color of kings. It depicts royalty, kingdom power, and authority. What they were saying is, you see a baby now, a king is coming. You see a baby in this little child, there is a king trapped in there. Folks, listen to me. We see you now, but the gifts trapped in you are going to come out there are gifts in you there is potential in you there is authority in you and it's going to come out you are going to say amen a hundred times more lord now there are gifts in you there is potential in you whatever you have achieved up to now is nothing compared to what is coming next. Amen. Hey, hey, hey. Your gifts are going to change. You see, your giving is going to be doubled or even multiplied a hundred times because God is now going to empower you afresh. 
Can somebody say amen to that? Your performance in ministry, in life, at work is going to be at, at a very higher level. Okay. Tell your neighbor, your life is going to go higher. And your relationship is going to grow stronger. Your faith is going to go powerful. None of what you have experienced before will be experienced again. Can you say those words to your neighbor? Okay, let's start. Okay, you're going to... What? I, 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 I can't hear you. I, I thought you were going to speak to your neighbor. Oh my goodness. See, your performance is going to go higher. Your faith is going to grow higher. And your... Come on, people, talk to your neighbor. I see better relationships in this year. I see stronger marriages this year. You see, Jesus was the bond that held Joseph and Mary together. If you read scriptures, you will notice that Joseph was going to let Mary go. Because he thought, mm -mm, she messed herself up and I'm not responsible. And the angel said, no, you're going to go with this girl. I see marriages getting stronger this year in the name of Jesus. I see relationships coming stronger in Jesus' name. If you are seated with somebody, tell them your relationship is going to grow stronger. Oh, and some of you are saying, hey, Zekakati, I'm not yet. Ah, no, 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 no. What you just said just makes you yet. The yet to fire is coming. Yee, this year, hey. Will I? Yes. Ask your neighbor, do you think I will? Ask, ask. Yes? How many of you say yes? Yes, yes you will. Yes. They brought incense to signify his priesthood as the mediator of the New Testament, as the intermediary between God and man, as the intercessor. Frankincense was a herb used during prayer. It gave off a sweet smelling aroma as people worshipped and prayed. Of course in Judaism. And that's the gift they brought. Even your relationship with God is going to be better. Your prayers your prayers, your prayers. Everybody shout, my prayers. My prayers. Gonna be answered. You watch. From the beginning of this year, I have walked and prayed and pointed my finger and talked to you, told you something is about to happen. Today it looks like nothing, but that's a big, big, massive miracle. For us to stand here and be able to see the vehicles going by really. <laughs> to you it is nothing. And I'm going to challenge you if you want a new plot this year. You want to enter into a new property this year. You want to acquire new property this year. Before you un uh, you, before you drive away or un, 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 un park your car and go away, I want you to walk through that passage up to the main road. Walk through praying, come back and go home. 
That's a miracle for us. It is an achievement beyond measure. In the last two weeks, we have worked from morning up to about midnight, trying to make things happen there. Yesterday, I left here at 10 p.m. Yesterday, I was here till 10, making sure that there was maram and that you could drive by. We, walk, we drove through it, so you can drive through as you go home. But listen to me, people. It is not a cheap miracle. It's an expensive miracle. We are going to pay for... But miracles are not cheap anyway. Jesus had to become man. He who was God became man so that we can be saved and become his brothers. So, but listen, never, never translate a miracle of God, a divine miracle of God into finance. God will find money. There are people who here who can donate money and we get this thing sorted out, but that would be another story for another day. Unless somebody says, let me be the one that takes the first charge. But there were. Myra, the last one, the sweet smearing aroma to, to signify how he brings bad things to good. Myra is always used on dead people. They rub the body with that kind of ointment and a body will never smell. What these people are saying to Jesus that when you've grown and you've done your job, you'll be dead. But you'll never see corruption. Indeed, he never saw corruption. He resurrected so that you too can have life. Four things that happened in Bethlehem. Number one. Oh, come on. Number one. Tell your neighbor something about angels quickly. You too. Talk. Talk to your neighbor. Let me see. Let me see some talking here. This is, this is not traditional Sunday. This is Tuesday. And for God, hey, some of you forgot this is Tuesday. You think it is a Sunday when you should be very holy. No, no. You talk to, talk to your neighbor and say, number one, what? Okay. Talk to somebody about angels. Come on. Number two, stars. stars. Talk, to, talk to your neighbor about stars. Come on. Huh. Number three, what? Baby. Well, some of you are going to have babies. But talk to your neighbor about babies. If you guys try anything stupid, you'll have twins so babies are coming oh babies babies are coming and number four gifts oh I forgot I thought you were reading from your own notes you're already copying from the ah, ah. stand up on your feet let us give praise to God stand up Do you know the song or hail the power of Jesus' name? Okay, let's see whether you can have the song on projector. If not, then you're going to have to tussle it up. Then I will invite. Who do I invite? Frida. Okay, whoever. Have you ever heard of this song? It's a Uganda song. Okay, you sing that one first and then we'll sing a Uganda one and then we'll be ready to go home. Oh, hail the power. Come on, let us sing together. Three, go. Oh, hail. Okay. 
Listen, this is how they sing it. This is how you sing it. Mm. Oh, hey, the power of Jesus. Let angels prosper. Let angels give the Lord a big hand of praise we thank him because a child was given to us and that is Jesus Christ the son of the living God so many people this morning are celebrating they are so happy yesterday and the other days people were buying new stuff new clothes new whatever but they don't know the meaning of Christmas can't you just thank God for you know what Christmas is happening today just give the Lord a big hand of praise he is so wonderful God is so good that at least we know it amen hallelujah be seated just for a short time our time is fast spent we are already into the second service 
the Luganda song, if you want to sing it in Luganda, we just stay around for the Luganda service. We shall sing it in the Luganda service. Just prepare your tithe, your offering, your everything you have to give this morning. Yes. <laughs> Some people celebrate when they are going to give. I had someone celebrating when I talked about giving. They were celebrating it with a hand clap because they love giving. Amen. And to us, a child was given, and we give what we can give. Amen. Hallelujah. We have only five days to the Passover festival. Isn't that wonderful? Only five days. Tell your neighbor, only five days. Is it five? Yes. Only five days. And it will be the Passover festival. We are going to Namboli. Are you with me? Is everybody with me? Please. Uh, this is very important. You need to know this. Victoria Christian Center are the organizers of the Passover festival. And if you, how many of you are members of this church? I want to see your hands up. Yes, you know you are a member of this church. You are one of the organizers. Just tell yourself, I'm one of the organizers. If you've not placed yourself anywhere, this is the time for you to do it. You are not an usher? Please, we need ushers. We need protocol, people to work in the protocol, protocol team choir it is too late they can't make and they smart they are very smart not 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 so so smart but they are smart yeah i don't want them to be proud even the ushers each one of all of you are very smart thank you for being smart. even all of you when i see you you are smart amen <laughs> today, today i tried on about three dresses and i told <laughs> doctor oh, I don't want these big dresses. And he says, Christmas, you have to put on something big. That's why I'm struggling now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But today is a special day to all of us. It is a special day to all of us. And 30th, that is Sunday, we shall have services here. The first service, the morning service, the English service. And then we shall have our Luganda service. After that, we shall all go back to our homes, eat food, prepare our... If actually, I would encourage you to set aside a time of prayer and fasting. Then in the evening, as Victoria Christian Centre members, we are going to be in Nambole to pray for our nation and to pray for the church. The church needs prayer special prayers amen and for me i believe most of the bad things happening in that in the nation today are happening because of what is going on in the church there is a lot of division in the church a lot of hatred and forgiveness it is too much we need to pray for the leadership of the church if you have it on your heart, come, let us come together. I know you are praying, but we really need to get together and pray for the church and for the nation. When we come back on the 31st, that is a time whereby we are all bringing all our other requests. But 30th is specially for the nation and the church. Amen? Are we together? Yes. We have to pray. And uh, I talked about the... the Praying, ushering, uh, call, uh, protocol, security. We have so many things to do at the stadium. Just come talk to Pastor Hannah uh, and ask her, where do you want me to work? Then she will place you somewhere. Choir is too late. Don't come. Don't come to say that I want to sing in the choir. That is too late. But so many other things. Cleaning loads of things please come and help us we thank you so much for the support you've been giving financial support we still need a lot of money but we believe in god that we shall get the money even before we come to that we get into the passover amen what else nothing when is the tomorrow we shall have our service you go eat food please rest early so that you can come at 5 30 that service for the workers is happening tomorrow. I, 
How many of you are saying I'll come? For me, I'll come. Doctor, me, Doctor, Pastor Hannah, Pastor, they've told they will come. Would you come? Come. Let us finish the year together. Because I think that is going to be the last Wednesday of the year. Come and we pray. We will never stop. Tomorrow we have the, our early morning prayer. Uh, the, for the. Oh yes, um, and those of you who are ministers, we have our conference starting on the 27th, that is Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh, doctor says he sees all of you as ministers. <laughs> I must say <laughs> that... Seriously, yes. Yeah, yeah. I have no intention to raise believers who remain believers until they go to see Jesus. There's no intention in me for you to be like that. You got to grow every day and come to a point where you are self-reliant. You can stand on your own. You can chase your own demons and help your neighbor also. My job is to train you, raise you, and make you self-sustaining. I can't be with you everywhere you are. I can't baby baby you for a year, two, three, ten years. No, no, no. So, if you hear there are people coming to do some work in our lives and you have the space and you have the time, if there are four sessions, come for two and go. But you can't expect me to sit with you and be with you and I hear no progress no growth what, what kind of leader should I be if I was like that so 27 28 29 I have brought quality leadership teaching here not just me I'm only going to do one session actually the rest I've invited men and women who have experience in leadership to help you and so that also you can tap into that anointing say amen. amen so 27 28 and 29 those three days there'll be a seminar here to raise your standard in life let them pray for you let them anoint you when I was growing up we would go places to get somebody to touch us because we knew something was on them. I went to Birmingham to meet Maurice Cerullo, my first time, many years ago, Birmingham, UK. Cerullo. I went to America to meet T.L. Osborne. I just wanted him to lay his hands on me. Once. We traveled to South Africa, Frida and I and Valerie Yukub and others, to meet Kenneth Copeland and Leonard Bonke. Many, many years ago, this is 80s, early 80s. Whatever they did was enough. We tapped into those anointings and here we are, here we are now. These things we don't tell you every day. But the principle is very clear. We knew. Where are you eating? We even went to Amsterdam. Where are you You started with Amsterdam. Where are you eating snails? You ate snails in Amsterdam. Okay. Yeah, you, that's where you started from. Yes, I think, yeah, you get the point. I went to Amsterdam <laughs> in 1982. Yes, before And I met uh, Billy Graham. Yes, Billy Graham. And he was kind enough to stay one and a half hours on the podium praying for each one of us individually. And he said words in my life that I can never forget. He said, everything that I am, I give to you now. Everything that God has given me, take it now. I can never forget it. Yes. You, you need somebody from far who prays for you without hidden agendas and ill intentions. There are people who pray for you and you know that they are going to look at you and say, <laughs> but then there is somebody who prays for you and he gives all not expecting anything back. Amen. Do you understand? 
And that's why we occasionally at times bring ministry to you like that. So that you can get that blessing. It is once in a year. It's not every day. We are not going to keep you here. And it is three days. Find two of the three and come. If you can manage the three, come. 27, 28. From now until I think 2nd of January, most offices are closed. Most businesses are low. Come. For prayer and invitation. Time. <laughs> 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> to 6 p.m. We will keep you here. We will feed you. You don't have to worry about anything. Just stay here. You got to cut something. Why do you think Elisha tells Elijah, I want what you have? Why do you think Deuteronomy 34 9, Moses laid his hands on Joshua? Why? Because there is what they call a transfer of spirit. There is an anointing that goes from somebody to you. Paul said in the book of Romans 1.11, I have desired, I have prayed that I should come to you so that I may impart some of my gifting. Impartation happens. Amen. And it doesn't matter if you don't catch it from one, you catch it from the other. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So please, please come. To be guided. To <laughs> come I'm about to cry. I'm about to kneel. <laughs> Frida said that when I went to Amsterdam, I ate snails. True. I'm a cough, but I did not know it was snails. It was so very nice. It looked like mist mint. So, uh, <laughs> okay. and it was mixed in, 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 in rice. Amen. So, so delicious. I was only told a, a couple of days later it was snails. And when I told Frida, it became a story. But it is snails. Yeah, I asked, I asked the man, what did we eat? He said, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh. So he went to the kitchen. And brought one. <laughs> okay. We want to, to welcome uh, the people who are coming from abroad. Abasama, we have people from abroad. Let's give them a special welcome. I saw Jemima. Where is Natalie? Jemima, stand. Natalie, where are you? I was seeing you on camera. Stand. Who else is coming from abroad? You are visiting. You came. All of you stand. We want to give you a special welcome. Stand where you are. Keep standing. They are still coming. They co I think they'll come for the second service. You are great, yes, you are holy one. Walked upon the sea, raised that earth. Reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything routine about you is great. You are great, yes, you are the one who walked upon the sea, wasted it. You reign in majesty, my God. Everything written about you is great. You are great. You are great. You are great. You are great. Oh yeah. Say you are great. You are great. Say you are great. You are great. Everything about you is great. You are great. Great you are, you are great. worship 